Welcome back. And you can see we had a bit of rain last night. The pigs are there, the chickens are making noise. But we've got Mitch up this weekend and we are moving this little sunshade contraption that I think they must have used for potting a long long time ago but we're going to try and move that to the back of the orchard so that I can use it for potting in summer so that it's nice and shaded so it was at the back of the tank here and just full of stuff and rubbish and so the boys are seeing if they can undo it and move it so we've chopped down the tree that was behind it and we're going to see if we can move it. Not sure if that's going to work. But we'll see now that we've got Mitch up. Some more strong arms. And we might be able to... I bought this avocado the other day. And that might do really well here. As long as this tree is not in the road too much. So i better go and give him a hand. Well, we've got it out, so... That yeah, was yeah, a bit of an effort, off, but now off. working out what to do. It's a big, big sheet of Rio, so they're going to undo it, lay it flat, see if we can move it. <laughs> so just working out where to put it so we've decided we're going to put it near down near the compost here over here because behind here is a bit shady so we're going to put it here so we're just moving the netting the Australops little play park we'll move that and we've flattened it out so then we'll move the mulcher and put it there And see how that goes. These uh, tree posts are really hard to get out. They're what's holding it all up together. Lucky Robert has this handy dandy tea post remover machine. So we'll get all these out and then we'll go and see if we can put them all back in around the other side. All right, so we've got the tea posts or star pickets, some people call them, in. And now it's time to grab the Rio and see if we can put that over, bend it over and put it up over here. All right, it's nearly done. The completion of my new propagation area. Just putting the little shelves in and then we'll get some heavy duty plastic to pop over the top which will make it waterproof. Nice dance, Robert. It's gonna be excellent. We'll put some um, matting on the bottom, so Good job, Mitch. we'll be able to put all our potting mix in there and all the pots. That'll give me something to do this week. It's fantastic. Yeah, we'll just knot this tree. Yeah. So it slips in. And then Lovely. Well done, boys. Well, Thank um, you. Zip ties. Mitch is holding behind the tree. Got some oh. Oop, hello. <laughs> and Jeddah. And maybe we tech screw these <laughs> to the posts. So they're here. Okay. Nice and close yeah. to my compost. And then they'll keep it nice. It'll work great. Right. What's a day in the garden without mowing? You might be able to see Mitchell mowing. Yeah. Oh, in the distance you can see Mitchell's mowing. And we're trying to clean up the front of the house. And of course, get the dingo out. And there's all these 
these bag of and it's just, just a mess in the front of the house. So we, the royal we, Ronnie. Don't know what we'll do with it, but it certainly needs cleaned up. It's a mess. An update on the broody hen situation. Excuse the wind, it's really windy. But here is Darlene. It's day 21 today. She's still sitting on the eggs. She just got off the nest, so I went and had a wee squiz. And unfortunately, there was a an egg squished in there with a little baby chick in it that had died. It looked like she'd squashed the egg. So that's sad and unfortunate. There's still 10 eggs underneath her. A few have got a bit of yolk on them. But the good news is that that means that Roger is being a daddy. So we'll see, we'll give her another few days and see if any hatch. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether she squashed it or what happened, but We'll see what happens to the other 10. So this is the next day and I got very excited this morning when I came out and Darlene got off the nest and there was a little egg pipping and I could hear a chip chip chip. So I thought we've got babies. So that was exciting. Came back, checked a couple of hours later and unfortunately, sadly, that little baby did not survive and then I found two others in there. They've come out of their shells, they just haven't survived, so whether, I'm not sure what happened, whether she's got off too much, they've got cold, or whether she just hasn't got up and let them, them breathe and move around, so they've sort of been a bit squashed, so that's four eggs down that um, all had chicks inside them, so the positive is Darlene unfortunately doesn't get an A for mothering, but we know that Roger can be a dad, so that's good. So we might start to collect some eggs from the orchard girls and start to incubate some in readiness for some point of lay pullets to sell for next year or for us to put back in the caravan when required. So, yeah, sadly, I don't think we're going to get any chicks and from the remaining eggs. There's, there's about, I think there's five left in there. So we'll see. We'll let her sit on those for a couple of days and see what happens but certainly not holding out hope sadly but good try darling afternoon tea in the pig pen here's Robert but they were following me I think I've got something for them now they've worked out he's coming they love their afternoon tea. Not sure what he's got for them. He's getting very fond of these boys. Some old bread. What else is in there, Dal? Oh, just a bit of grain. A bit of grain, some old bread. Put it on the tussock, do you want them to Dig that out, dear. Yeah. But they, they love a good scratch now. And when we're filling up their water, they love to be squirted and roll around in the mud. Pigs in mud, huh? But yes, Robert is getting very fond of these boys. too close I get a nose in the face. Bit of old bread for some friends. Which they love, they like most things. Not much they don't like. Oranges they don't like. No. They don't like oranges that's true. Citrus. citrus they don't like. They don't like don't feed them citrus, they won't eat that. Mm. Good boys. You're a good boy, aren't you? 
<laughs> Yummy afternoon tea. I wanted to show you a little bit of something we haven't shown you yet, which is our creek, which is, runs along here. And if you can see, I'll pan back and you'll see where the house is. It's the chicken cover at the moment, but the house. So this is our creek that runs right down the side of our property. We have pumping rights to the creek, which is handy when it gets dry. But really, ever since we've arrived, it's been very difficult to get down to the creek. This is where our pump lives. But Robert's been doing a fantastic job and it did look sort of all like this that you couldn't get in. But he has been whippersnipping. I'll try and get through the gate. He spent the last three nights whippersnipping so that we can get down to the creek which is fabulous and there's a beautiful nice clearing here now and I'll take you along and show you the most amazing willow tree so he comes out here with his whippersnipper and his earmuffs and I don't see him for a couple of hours but this so it's a beautiful little creek you can see there lots of water flowing but under the willow tree here the most amazing tree. So he's cleared all this. It was just full of blackberries all, all the way around here. But look at this willow tree. It is amazing. And look at this trunk. And inside it's just this massive big hole down there. But it's a gnarly old thing. But a beautiful Mrs. Willow. And he's even come all the way down here and he's pretty keen to do a lot of this and really just reclaim a lot of the, the land that's there and the possibility that we could in future put some pigs down here to clear it up a little bit more. But he's done such a fantastic job. Absolutely amazing. Gorgeous little creek under the willow. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that. Now I'll take you up and let's have a look at the chicken caravan and see how that's going. So here we are at the chicken caravan. We've had a little bit of a slowdown in production over the last sort of week or so. That's Roger in the background. Um, we've got some broody hens in here, which makes it really, really difficult when they get in the caravan and they won't get out. So what we've done over the last, yesterday and today, I've marked a couple of the girls, put a little ring on their foot to see the ones that have just staying in there and, and won't get out. So we've found three of the main culprits and what we've done is we've taken them out of here and we've put them into the orchard. I'll jump in. So I'm in here now. So what's been happening is, <laughs> we can have a look. There are so many sitting in the nesting boxes. They're oozing out. Look at their faces. Oozing out. They all just want to sit in there. Obviously it's a spring thing and they all want to be mummers. Let's have a look at the eggs. So our egg production went down from somewhere between 15 and 20 a day to about 8 to 10. Look at that. And then they get a bit, they get, get a bit grumpy. That's a, that's a, I'm a broody, leave me alone noise. So we've got a few there. So <laughs> we're just going to have to keep removing them. And what we've done is yesterday swapped a couple of the can't see them, where are they? The newer light Sussexes. They're under there. So these are two of the new light Sussexes. We put them in here 
and swap them for a couple of the older broody buffs. So we put three in the orchard. And it's a bit of a rooster off here at the moment. Uh, it's pretty tight in there, so now uh, we've got about 28 chickens in there. So we'll see what we do for the next couple of days, whether we put a few more in. So old Tom and Jerry here. Uh, one of the roosters is a lot bigger than the other one. And whether or not we keep these two in here, we'll see. But yeah, there's a lot of rooster competition. So that's what's happening, yeah. Egg production gone down a little bit, but hopefully that will um, come back up as we, we sort it out. But look at this girl. She gets a bit grumpy. And I can put, put my hand under there and, and fish out some eggs because they tend to sit on them a bit. So, But apart from that, it's working really well. I'll close that up. Collect those a little bit later. So that's what's happening on the farm. Mm -hmm. Lots of rooster noise. All right, thanks for watching. Until next time. See ya.